church, can we celebrate because Jesus is alive? We want to welcome each and every one of you, our online family as well. We want to say something. We believe that no matter how we came in, Jesus has a plan for you. No matter how you came in, we are all going to walk out differently. Because at the mention of his name, everything can change. So we want to encourage you like this. And if you walked in sick, you're going to walk out here. If you walked in bound, you're going to walk out free. And if you walked in heavy, you're going to walk out light. If you walked in weary, you're going to be all right. Just the mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. Just the mention of his name. Everything can change. Everything can change. Oh, if you walk in. So thankful that you're taking time out of your Easter weekend to be with us. And if you're new, maybe someone invited you and you're like, so what is this all about? Why Easter and why are these people so excited? Come on. Well, listen, Easter is all about the love of God who sent his son so that we could experience true life. And that has been our prayer for you coming into this weekend that each and every one of us would experience the true life that Jesus has to offer. So yes, if you're new to Next Level Church, we want you to know uh, that we're gonna be here for a little over an hour. We're gonna sing some songs. We're gonna celebrate. The words will be on the screen if you haven't noticed by now. Uh, we like to turn the music up loud here at Next Level Church. We do that for a couple of reasons, but one of those is so that you can sing as loud as you want. So if you're like, oh, I have a terrible voice, it doesn't matter. It's all praise to God, amen? So you do, we're gonna sing, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna look into God's word and see what it has to say from the Easter story that applies to our life. And we're just gonna meet with the Lord today. So we're so glad you're here. Yes, we're gonna invite the worship team to come back because who is ready to worship? Come on, let's come go. Come on, Jesus is alive. Let's worship. Let's celebrate God, let's go. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Come on. No matter where you are today, no matter how you came in, God is here. Come on. And this is the day you made. And so I rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad in it. And this is where I believe. That you are more than enough, more than enough for me. And you are faithful to your promise. You are strong when I am weak. And when 
at all worshiping yet but for right now we just want to ask that each and every one of us come on let's put that joy on our face and a smile turn and greet those around us our neighbors let's give them a high five a handshake online family come on we love the fact that we're all in this together please go ahead and drop your name in the chat additional seating good to see you and after that if you feel so comfortable please go ahead and grab a seat we have an awesome video for each and every one of us to enjoy so let's put our eyes on the screen and let this video take us on the rest of our service. Hey there, Next Level family. Happy Easter. I'm Pastor Charles, and this is Pastor Sarah. And we are so excited to have you joining us to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. 
We hope that by the time you leave here today, you have felt the love of God in a real and tangible way. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. In the seat back in front of you is a new here card. You can take that card, fill it out, and bring it to the new here start here sign at the end of service. There, a member of our team would love to get to know you and give you a free gift just for stopping by. If you're new and joining our online family, we want to say welcome to you as well. You can text NLC NEW to the number 77411. We will send you a digital New Here card that you can fill out and send right back to us. A member of our team is so excited to connect with you. And if you're local to the Southwest Florida area, we would love to have you come check out one of our services in person next Sunday. For more details on our locations and service times, you can visit nextlevelchurch.com slash locations. Well, ladies, Beautiful Conference 2024 is right around the corner and I cannot wait. So check out this video and then we'll be right back. If you're serious about stepping into the calling, that he has on your life, to fulfill the kingdom potential that he has placed in your life. I'm talking to you. And sometimes what you want to hear the least is what God wants you to hear the most. And I've seen trials, and I've seen mistakes, and I've seen failures, and I've seen tribulations, and I'm standing here to testify to the faithfulness and the goodness of our God. He who promised is faithful. He's faithful. Hey, we have so many fun plans in store for every girl that is in every generation, and we are only five weeks away, and we want to fill Sun Coast Arena with you and your friends. So invite your friends and your family and your coworkers because we are going to have an incredible time. Tickets are on sale now, but the price goes up in just a few weeks, so don't wait. <laughs> for more details on all things Beautiful Conference, visit nextlevelchurch.com slash beautiful. Well, that's all the news we have for you today, church family. Let's put our hands together for our pastors as we continue with our Easter service. Happy Easter! Good morning! Happy Easter, everyone! We're so excited that you are here. Hey, can we make some noise for everyone participating with us online and in additional seating? We're so grateful that you are here Man, I look around, the room looks so beautiful. Everyone has brought their peeps with them. Come on, someone. I'm excited, man. I, I know I brought my peeps with me. Um, I know that you brought your peeps, and we're just having a peep. Peeping. What? Did somebody say peeps? Oh Did somebody say peeps? What we got peeps happening? for everybody. Oh, my gosh. Hey, everybody, oh, welcome all my peeps out in additional seating, yes. my peeps in the house. Come on. Hey, you're my favorite peep, though, man. Uh, Come I, on. You're I my peep favorite what you did peep. there, man. That's yeah, cool. you like that? You yeah. like that? Come on. It is Easter it's for Easter. peeps' sake. Come on. It's Easter for peeps' sake. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Quay, listen. All right, all right. We like to have fun we around like here at Next fun. Level okay, Church right? a lot. Like, yep. a lot of fun. We like to laugh a lot. And uh, I was backstage and I was listening to you and it wasn't that fun. So oh. I thought I'd come out and bring some more bring fun. Bring some excitement. Okay, come okay. on. Come on, everybody. I'm okay with that. Yeah, we're having I'm a great okay time. That. And, you know, a couple weeks ago, Pastor Lewis got to live his dream out to preach with the robe just like Jesus. And today I get to live my dream out with all of this. But have you? You look great, by the way. Well, I appreciate it. And man. I think I they're, hard they're, at this. They're, 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 they are not acknowledging the shoe no, game. Though. No, 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 no. Look at the that. The shoe game. Beep, 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 beep. Listen, these are these are like these. You know, they have the on cloud shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are actually the on peeps. On peeps. And these shoes. these are more comfortable. I'm telling you, these are good for your back. Your sciatic, all kinds of yeah, stuff. They don't oh, make them in size 13s, though. No, so. you would break these. Yeah. You would, yeah. You would crush them. It would be the more peeps. like scrambled eggs. That's if true. I was yeah, that's right. Right. Okay, that's right. That's right. 
Got it. We're excited that all of our peeps are here today. Come yes. on, this is incredible. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. We're so excited that you are here. We like to have fun. Um, we like to have fun, not just in this room, but in all of our rooms. We, have, we are one house with many rooms, and it's so incredible to see uh, what God allows us to do. So if maybe you're new here, and maybe you've, this is your first uh, time even being in this room today, um, but we just want you to know that there are rooms in Cape Coral. Um, there's a location uh, east of I-75 off Gateway Boulevard, and God just allows us to uh, uh, be aligned and, and bring the gospel to so many other places in our region. We're excited Absolutely. for that. Absolutely. We want to invite you to come back next week. We actually have our normal service times. They're on the screen right behind us, and we want to make sure that you guys take note of those so you come back at a time when service is starting. But we're also really excited, Pastor Quay, because next Sunday we launch a brand new series called Breaking the Stigma, Our Faith and Mental health and so for the next four weeks we're going to be talking about mental health and what the bible has to say about it so we want to invite you to come back because we believe that god's going to bring some breakthrough and some life change so make plans to come back next week yeah god is on the move we're going to continue our time of worship with the giving of our tithes and our offering and as you can see there on the screen behind me, that there are multiple ways that you can do so. Uh, whether it is you feel comfortable taking your phone out, uh, scanning the QR code that's on that screen behind me. Uh, as you scan it, uh, take out the, the, ca the camera and scan it. There's going to be a website there that you can just click on and it'll open up for you to either give uh, one time or reoccurring. Um, but also there's an opportunity for all of us to grab the envelope in the seat back in front of you or on your seat if you are in additional seating so that you can um, fill that out throughout the remainder of the service and then drop that into any of our offering stations um, on your way out. Around here, we have our core values, and one of those is that we live to give, and that simply means that we generously steward all that God has given us. And we just believe this, that when we get a chance and opportunity every single week to trust God with our finances and to give into the offering, that we actually get to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Now, we cannot wait because as we were talking about multiple rooms, we get to launch our fourth location in the heart of downtown later this year. Come on, church family. We can't wait to see what God is going to do. A, a, a building that God has blessed us with 40,000 square foot. That's not just the downtown location home, but is also the home to two amazing partners. We're partnering with Lee Health, and there's already the clinic that is open there, Lee Health, Dunbar uh, Medical Offices. And then we're also partnering with St. Matthews. They're going to be opening a shelter for women and children, listen to this, who are experiencing homelessness. And we get to be a part of that. When we get to give today, we get to be a part of what God is doing in our communities, in our neighborhoods with people who are, who are needing help in a desperate way. Listen to this, the clinic is already seeing over a thousand people every month who otherwise would not be able to have this kind of health care. We get to be a part of that when we trust God with our finances. And so listen, you and I have an opportunity right now to take a step of faith, to trust God with our finances and to be able to be a part of what God is doing downtown today, not just later this year or, or down the road, but today to impact people's lives and see something amazing happening when we open up the location, when the shelter opens, that, that women and children's lives are changed. You and I get to be a part of that. When we give a one-time gift or we set up reoccurring, we trust God with our finances. Church family, will you stand with me as we pray over the remainder of our service and our offering? We're gonna pray over the downtown location as well. So Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we give you all the honor, all the praise. God, we are so grateful, Lord God, as we trust you in our finances. God, that you can make a way, God, for, for the downtown location, God, not to just be financed, God, but to allow people to experience radical transformational change, God, where you can meet them exactly where they are. God, we pray, God, that you will just bless each and every person, God, who steps out on that faith and, and allows, God, you to use them in incredible ways. God, would you speak? to us over the remainder of our service. God, may our hearts just be open to fully receive the word of God. Lord, we praise you and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. The church family, we get this opportunity now to respond, to respond in worship as we sing a song from the house, an incredible song that Jesus is near. In Romans 8, 34, it talks about how, how, how there was a, God was uh, sent his son and he died and that he was risen and sits on the right hand. That he is in intercession with each and every one of us. 
So maybe you've walked in here um, and, and you're down and out. Maybe you're struggling, but, but he is interceding on your behalf, which simply means that he stands in the gap as he prays and as he opens up the floodgate. I just want you to be reminded that Jesus is near. So whatever you have, whatever you've walked in with, whatever prayers that you need, whatever healing you need, it's available if you seek him. So let's worship together.
Sing that together. That Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. We testify that Jesus paid. Nothing 
somebody and just tell them, I'm so glad I get to worship Jesus next to you. Come on, tell them. Then you can be seated. So glad. So glad I'm sitting next to you. Well, what is up next level church? Hey, wow. It is good to be in God's house. Welcome to all of you in additional seating. So thankful uh, that you are able to find a place to sit in this crowded, crowded place. And let's all be gentle with one another on the parking lot when leaving. Amen. Not that we're leaving anytime soon, but just wanted to kind of throw, just seat. I'm just seeding thoughts, just seeding thoughts. You know, I love this time of year. Anybody else love this time of year? We were walking out of a restaurant a couple of nights ago and I looked at my buddy, there was a nice breeze. And I said, man, I forget how much I like the weather in March. Like it's, like it's beautiful this time of year. It's so, um, it's a spring training. Anybody else, any baseball fans? My family and I were huge baseball fans. I have gotten my fill this spring. Man, I went to a lot of games, so fun. And we have a tradition in our family uh, every year for 16 years now in a row, we went to opening day at Tropicana Field. We're big Tampa Bay Rays fans. And so I think we have a picture of our family. Uh, there we are uh, outside of Tropicana just it's fun tradition uh, now that the boys are growing up and uh, of course Will and his wife Jess my daughter-in-law so we're, it's her third year with us which is really really fun already and so uh, it's just a great time of year I love Easter I love this weekend Easter weekend and you know Easter weekend is is interesting because it's one of the few holidays in the American calendar that we celebrate that is actually kind of a multi-day you know event like it's, it starts on Good Friday what we call in America Good Friday uh, it goes through Saturday and then Sunday, of course, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. And, and it's it's interesting because most other holidays in the American culture are just kind of one-offs, right? It's like Memorial Day or Labor Day. And yeah, they're hooked to a weekend, but it's just like one day. Like the 4th of July is just a day. But Easter's different. Easter happens over three consecutive days that we really kind of slow down and, 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 you know, honor Jesus in this holiday. What's interesting is in the Jewish culture, the one that Jesus was in and the Bible was written in, uh, man, they had all kinds of multi-day feasts and festivals. Like they were always, you know, celebrating for seven days or 14 days. So I have an idea. I say we petition to make Easter like a 10-day holiday. Anybody else? Yeah, all the kids in the room were like, yes, amen. And all the parents were like, oh, no. No, you didn't. Just say that out loud. I did, actually, because I'm a big kid at heart. But hey, we're so glad you're here. And, uh, you know, thinking about this and praying about uh, what the Lord would want me to share on Easter weekend as we celebrate Easter together this year. Um, I, I was drawn to the, to the three distinct days, because actually in the Bible, um, in the Gospels, there are four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that tell the story of Jesus, you know, his death, burial, and resurrection. 
And we're going to look in each of those um, different parts today. But, but in there, they actually refer to the three days. They have proper names for them. Friday was known. We know it as Good Friday. But in Bible times, Friday was known as Preparation Day. Saturday was the Sabbath or Shabbat, which we'll talk more about. That's the Hebrew word for it. We'll talk more about that in a couple minutes. And Sunday was known as the first day, the first day. And as I've been reflecting and praying and preparing for this weekend, I couldn't help but think about those three days. And I think they have a lot to do with us today as well. So before we turn to the word of God, one more time, can we just pause and pray? Father, I thank you for the moments we share. I thank you for this opportunity we have to look into your word. Lord, I just pray that today as we open your word and reflect on your resurrection story on Resurrection Sunday, that God, you would meet with us. Lord, our hearts are open, speak. God, I pray that people wouldn't hear me. Lord, if they hear me, they'll leave inspired and encouraged maybe, but not changed. But Lord, if we hear from you, we say around here often, one touch from you, one word from you can change everything. Lord, would you transform us? We give you permission to transform us today in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed with that prayer said, amen. Amen. So there's three days, the preparation day, the Sabbath, and the first day. And of course, the Easter week really starts on Palm Sunday, that if you go back a week before Jesus' resurrection, it was Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and, and they, they were with a parade, they were waving palm branches and just praising him, and he came in as, you know, kind of the celebrated king. And over the course of the week, by Thursday, things had degraded a lot until Jesus and his disciples found themselves in a garden and Judas and some soldiers came and they arrested Jesus in that garden. And they led him away and throughout the night, he went from one illegal trial to the next to the next until by Friday morning, he was sentenced to death. Jesus was beaten, he was flogged, a crown of thorns put on his head. He was beaten 39 times, whipped 39 times and forced to carry his own cross to a hill called Golgotha where there he was nailed to that cross. Not for his own sin, for he had done nothing wrong. He lived a perfect sinless life. But for the sin of you and I, for all of mankind on that first Friday. And the Bible actually tells us that for three hours the world went dark when Jesus breathed his last and when I think about Friday, that first Friday, let me give you three thoughts for us for Easter. Here's the first one. Friday was painful. Friday was painful. I can't imagine the pain that Jesus, our Savior, went through for us. Friday was so painful. He was beaten. He was, he was nailed, crucified to that cross for our sin, not for his own sin, for our sin, Friday was painful. And yes, there's the pain that Jesus went through, but I also think about the pain of being one of Jesus' disciples. Imagine being one of his followers. In Matthew chapter 27, it, it tells us about some of the, the women and the disciples who followed Jesus. I want us to look at it, verses 55 to 61. It says this, many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's son. So there were several women and, and mothers of the disciples who, who traveled with them for three years to take care of their basic needs. Verse 57, as evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. And then right here, look at this next part. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary just sat there opposite the tomb. Everybody went away. And Mary and the other Mary, they just sat there just stunned. Friday was so painful on that first Friday, those who had followed Jesus, who had given up so much, who had sacrificed everything to follow him, this, this Messiah, this savior of the world, found themselves on that first Friday in pain. They found themselves left alone, left confused, empty-handed, and brokenhearted. They left, they found themselves in pain. Friday was so painful. All of their hopes and dreams had just died and been buried right in front of them. And as I've been praying over the last few weeks, I couldn't help but think that there were some, maybe many, maybe hundreds who've come into one of our locations today. And you're in a Friday 
season. You're in a season of pain that when you look back over the last or your current season that you're in, the last few weeks or months or even years perhaps, it's been a season of loss, a season of confusion. It's been a, a season of frustration and heartache for you. It's, it's maybe you received a bad report from, from the doctor or you were downsized or let go from your job recently and it's, it's left you, the circumstances of your life have left you wondering why, left you discouraged, lonely, rejected. Living in Friday is so painful. For Sarah and I, in serving Jesus for over 30 years, which by the way, this weekend, Easter weekend, 33 years ago, this weekend, I said yes to a relationship with Jesus. So Easter's special for me. Yeah, it's awesome. It's never lost on me. I was a 15-year-old teenager, and I was in a church a lot like this in northern Indiana. I raised my hand and said yes to a relationship with Jesus, which is an opportunity we're going to give several, all of you here in a few minutes. But as Sarah and I have served the Lord over the last 33 years, and her longer than that, we understand Friday seasons. We understand seasons of pain. We've walked through seasons of rejection. We've walked through seasons of frustration. We've walked through season of brokenheartedness, seasons where friends who told you they'd be with you forever end up stabbing you in the back. Seasons of wondering, seasons of asking why, seasons of, of questioning, seasons of heartbreak and loss and betrayal, broken hearts and broken dreams. We've walked through the pain of Friday seasons. But what's interesting is the Bible refers to Friday as preparation day. And it makes me wonder, church family, is it possible that we serve a God who can take the pain of our Friday and use it to prepare us for something greater? Here's what I've learned. If I've learned anything in 30 years, I've learned that it's true, that we serve a God who is able to use our pain to prepare us for something greater if, if we'll allow him to, if we'll let him. We serve a God who can do just that. See, Friday was painful, but there was another day there was Saturday. Look, John chapter 19, verse 31. It says, now it was the day of preparation. Speaking of Friday, and notice the capital P there in this. Okay, so I want you to know, I took this directly from the New International English translation of the version of the Bible. And so that's not a typo. Like it's not just that we capitalized the word because we thought it would be fun. That's actually em emphasized in the Bible. Here's what that means. That means that it was a proper noun. They wanted us to know this was the day of preparation. And then it goes on, it says, in the next day, which is where we're headed, Saturday, was to be a special look at what it says, Sabbath. Notice the capital S again. It's a proper noun. So if Friday was painful, the second thought I want to share with us this Easter Sunday as we celebrate is that Saturday was a pause. Saturday was a pause. And I always understood the Sabbath like intellectually from Bible college and stuff. But last summer in June, when Sarah and I and a team from Next Level Church got to go to Israel for 10 days and tour the Holy Land, Sarah and I actually flew in a few days early and uh, got to meet with some of our, our ministry leaders who were there in Jerusalem. And so our plane landed, we flew on a Saturday. So our plan landed on Saturday afternoon. And so we landed in Tel Aviv and got through customs, got our luggage and everything. They loaded us up in the car. It's about an hour-ish drive from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And while we were driving on the road, we noticed, but we didn't think much of it, that like, we're pretty much the only car out there. Like, there's nobody else out there. Like, we're just kinda, it's just kind of us. We get to the hotel and the driver helps us unload our bags and they check us into the room and we're on a high floor in this hotel. And so we get up to our room and we kind of look out the window and we notice like the streets are empty and like the train's not running and like, it's just really quiet. And we didn't think much of it until the sun went down. Because see, the Sabbath in Israel and in the Jewish heritage and, and culture starts Friday night at sundown and goes all the way through Saturday evening. And so our missionary friends, Michael and Vanessa, who work in Jerusalem, they told us a few days later, they said, oh yeah, yeah, you flew in on Saturday afternoon, so ev literally everything in the city shuts down. But at sundown, and guess what happened? On Saturday night, at sundown, the sun went down. All of a sudden, the streets are hopping, the trains running, the bars were open, the market was a pair. That's the thing in Jerusalem, too. Like, the, it was crazy. And we're like, what in the world? And Michael and Vanessa were like, yeah, that's the Sabbath. You came in on the Sabbath. They still honor the Sabbath today. So, so in the Easter story, picture it. 
After Jesus is taken down from the cross and he's buried in the tomb, they had to do it before sunset, the day of preparation on Friday. They roll the stone in front. And then all of Friday night into Saturday, all day Saturday, all the way through Saturday for 24 long hours, nothing happened. The world was paused. Again, imagine being one of Jesus' followers. How difficult would that be? Look, in Luke chapter 23, it says this, verses 55 and 56. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Look at this, what it says next. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the command. What? How hard must it have been for them? All that they've been through, all the emotion of the highs and lows, watching their savior die and be buried in a tomb, all of the trauma of that, right? All of the heartache, the frustration, and now, nothing? They just go home? They're just, everything's just left unresolved? Ever experienced anything like that? Ever went through a season like that? See, if Friday was painful, Saturday was a pause. They were in a holding pattern. They, 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 were, they, were, they were in limbo. They were in a waiting room. And let's be honest, we don't like waiting rooms. As a matter of fact, we Americans, we don't like pauses at all, do we? We don't like to pause. We don't like to wait. My goodness, we can't even sit at a stoplight anymore without picking up our phone and checking it, right? And much less the microwave. What? Three and a half minutes? I have to wait three and a half minutes for my food? How dare they? Right, like we don't like to wait. And yet here they are, the followers of Jesus, up in the air. Everything's unsure, everything's uncertain, everything's undone, everything's unresolved. And I just have this sense that there are many of us who are listening to me today. As we celebrate Easter, you may be sitting there in your pastels or your bright Easter colors. <laughs> but on the inside, everything's up in the air. Yeah, on the inside, everything's unresolved. On the, on the inside, everything is chaotic. You feel like you're in a season of pause. Well, what do we do? How do we handle this? Well, look at the verse again. Look what the women did. Verse 56. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. Look, it says, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the command. What? They rested. They went home. Even with the uncertainty of the future, even with everything undone and unresolved, they waited, they rested, they, they laid down worry, they laid down fear, they laid down uncertainty and trying to control and manipulate everything. They just rested. What? How? How was that possible? Well, look at the verse one more time. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath. Here's how, look. In obedience to the command. Now, what does that mean? Well, in order to understand that, we actually have to go back into the Old Testament because, see, this is the Jewish people and the Jewish heritage goes back th uh, thousands and thousands of years all the way back, ready for this? Some of us are going to remember to the children of Israel who were slaves in Egypt. And they were slaves in Egypt in the book of Exodus for 400 plus years. And then God raised up a deliverer named Moses. And God sent Moses to go and confront Pharaoh and lead the children of Israel out on dry ground. They got to the Red Sea. God parted it. He turned seas into highways. Come on, we just sang that. That's a metaphor. That's what we're singing. We're singing about God delivering the children of Israel. That's what we're singing about. They parted the Red Sea and Moses and over a million people were led out of slavery bondage in Egypt. But they didn't go into the promised land. Instead, they went into a 40-year holding pattern called the wilderness. Talk about a long pause. Wow. And Moses approached God and he said, God, how are we going to feed these million people every single day out here in the wilderness? And so God, in his sovereignty, sent what was called manna. Manna was like this bread-like substance. And he commanded the people of Israel every single day, go out and gather just enough. Don't gather too little and don't gather too much. Just enough for your daily sustenance. Your daily bread. Anybody recognize that phrase from Psalm 23? It's a reference back to the, to the wilderness in Exodus 16. And then he said, gather your daily bread. But there was a caveat. On the sixth day, on Friday, on preparation day, before the Sabbath, 
Here's what I want you to do. Look, Exodus 16, verse 22. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much. Two omers for each person, which, uh, uh, omer, what a great measuring unit. Right? Like, we need to bring back omers. Like, uh, no, we don't. I don't have any idea what that is. And the leadership community came to report them. Here's the point. Here's the point. The point is, for 400 years in Egypt, as slaves in Egypt, they never took a day off. They were never given a day off. You think your boss is a slave driver. They were never given a day off. And when God delivered them out of their slavery into freedom, out of their bondage, he said, I want to institute a new reality for you. I want to give you one out of seven. I want to give you a Sabbath, a day of rest. And so he said to them, on that Sabbath, I don't even want you to go out and gather manna. I'm going to give you twice as much on Friday and make sure that it lasts all the way through. Why? So you can have a true day of rest. So when it says that these ladies, they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the command, God actually th thought this was so important, he put it in the Ten Commandments. Look, Exodus chapter 20, four, four chapters later. Six days, verses 9 and 10 says, you shall labor and do all your work. But on the seventh day, it's a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work. And look how serious he is. Neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals. I don't even care if somebody from another country comes and stays with you for a little while. They don't get away. Ain't nobody working on the Sabbath. That's how God was serious about this. So what did the women do? What did the women do when they faced this situation that was undone and unresolved and chaotic? They rested. They went back to the word and they said, I'm just gonna obey what God said. And I believe, church family, that's a word for some of us, maybe hundreds of us this Easter, that you feel like you're in a Saturday season. You feel like you're in a pause season. And you've been wrestling and struggling. You've been trying to control things and manipulate. Well, if they would just do it, well, we could just get this done. And God would say to you, sister, rest. Daughter, rest. Brother, rest. Son, rest. Trust me in the waiting. Trust me in the pause. One of the most famous passages in all of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, says this. Now they that try and control and manipulate everything will renew their strength. Wait, no, that's not what it says. What does it say? The verse says, now they that wait upon the Lord. Here's the promise, will renew their strength. That's the promise of God. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run and not grow weary. They'll walk and not faint. What do we do in the waiting? Even when things are undone, even when things don't make sense, even when things in the natural, these ladies could have went back and called a team meeting. Huddle up, everybody. We got work to do. Jesus is gone. What are we going to do, do now? How are we going to keep the movement going? They didn't do that. It says that on Saturday, in the Sabbath, in the waiting, they obeyed the word and they rested. And some of you, that's God's word for you. Son, daughter, it's time to rest. See, Friday was painful. Saturday was a pause. But there was a third day, and that was Sunday. And Sunday was for praise. Sunday, the first day of the week, was for praise. Each of the four gospel writers talk about it. I want us to look at it. Luke chapter 24 says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Mark chapter 16, when the Sabbath was over, see the capital S? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. John chapter 20, each writer gives us different details and perspectives. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. My personal favorite, Matthew chapter 28, after the Sabbath, after the waiting period, after the pause, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it for dramatic effect. We serve a risen Savior. He's a lot. He's a lot. Friday was painful. 
Saturday was a pause and Sunday was for praise. On that first Sunday, Jesus rose from the grave and the world has never been the same since death and hell, sin and the grave were, were, were beaten once and for all. And here's what that means for us. What it means for us is, if you're in a Friday season, it feels painful. If you're in a Saturday season where you feel like you're in a holding pattern, you're in a pause, I want you to know Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. Friday's good, because Sunday's coming. I want us to reflect on that for a couple of minutes. Dawns in Galilee. Some say madman, some say king. Wonder working rebel priest. Jesus Christ the Nazarene. He knew well what it would take. Free us all from sin and grave. A perfect man would have to die, and only he could pay that. Sunday is coming 
Don't lose hope cause Sunday is coming Devil you're done, you better start running Friday's good cause Sunday's coming Wow, you can be seated. Let's be seated across every space. Additional seating, you too. I wanna pray for us. I wanna pray in two directions today as we celebrate Easter. The first is maybe you're here, one of our rooms or online family and you've, you've never said yes to a relationship with Jesus. I want you to know you can. If you're not in relationship with the living God, you can be. And here's the good news. We don't have to earn it. It's not anything that we do. It's not us striving or trying hard enough or being a good enough person. It's a gift from God. It is the grace of God. That's why Jesus came. Because God, our heavenly father, looked down at us fallen sinful mankind and, and he saw us in our sinful condition and he knew we're never gonna be able to be good enough. And so he sent his son to pay the price to build a bridge for us so that you and I, fallen, sinful, broken humanity, could know what it is to be redeemed, to be forgiven, and to be in relationship with our Heavenly Father. So if you wanna say yes to a relationship with Jesus, I wanna give you a chance to do that. Our style around here is we're not gonna call you out or, 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 or embarrass you in any way. We just wanna give you a chance to express on the outside what you're feeling on the inside. So in every room, can we just bow our heads for a moment? Maybe close our eyes even just for the personalness, the privateness of this moment. And I wanna give you an opportunity to do that. If you wanna say yes to a relationship with Jesus, it's simply as acknowledging that you're a sinner, you're imperfect, believing that what Jesus did on the cross was payment for you, and then confessing it. So I'm gonna to count to three, and if you wanna say yes, would you just slip your hand up? One, two, three. Awesome, fantastic, thank you. Oh, wow, yeah, keep it up just for a second. Fantastic, thank you, thank you. Young and old, it's happening in the room I'm in right now. Additional seating, you too, just keep your hand up. Make sure that your host sees it. Any of our online family, you can just put it in the chat. Fantastic, Pastor Matt, that's me, include me in. I wanna say yes to a relationship with Jesus. Fantastic, you can put your hands down. Wow, wow. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna lead us in a prayer. And so I'm gonna lead us and I'm gonna ask all of us, whether you raise your hand or not, all of us to repeat this prayer. And if you've raised your hand, I want you to pray these words from your heart because God, the God of the universe is gonna hear your prayer and he's gonna come in and transform you right now. Come on, let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus, thanks for loving me and bringing me here today. I acknowledge I'm a sinner, I'm imperfect, and I need a savior. I repent of my sin, I turn away from it, and I run toward you. Come into my heart, wash me clean, make me a new creation. Thank you for including me in the family of God, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wow, come on, that is awesome, yeah, woo! Wow. Hey, listen, if you just raised your hand, and there were so many in the room I'm in right now, if you raise your hand, our team's gonna come back in just a moment and give you further instructions, next steps. We wanna help you in this new relationship that you just began with God. I made that decision 33 years ago this weekend. That was me, you, I was you right there. It's awesome, it's awesome, it's happening like that. So I, I want us to pause for just a, a couple more moments because I also recognize that there are many of us who have come into Easter this year and maybe you're in a Friday season, maybe you're in some kind of pain in your life right now, maybe you're in a Saturday season, a paused kind of season, I want you to know that the same spirit, the Bible says, that raised Jesus from the dead can quicken our mortal bodies. In other words, can touch us in such a way that it changes us. We believe in healing around here. We believe in miracles around here. We believe the Holy Spirit can speak. That's why we say so often, one touch from God, one word from God can change everything. So I want us right where we are. Let's just maybe close your eyes again. Father, we just pause. Jesus, we thank you. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you to speak to us. And that gentle, still, small voice in our heart that always aligns with the Bible. Spirit, we give you permission to speak. God, speak to us. Just ask the Lord right now, God, is, Father, is there anything you want to say to me? 
I believe there's some business leaders who are here and you're in what the Bible calls a valley of decision. And you have a big decision to make. And the Holy Spirit wants to give you wisdom and discernment in your heart right now. He wants to speak to you. You're gonna know the path. So there's gonna be a peace that passes understanding. You're gonna know the path of the decision you're supposed to take to lead your business forward. I believe the Holy Spirit is whispering to some of you, daughter, I see you and I love you. There is no flaw in you. Stop listening to what the world says and start turning up. Amplify the volume of what I say about you. same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is here right now in this moment. And I believe there's, God wants to heal. We've been praying for healing and miracles to take place in this moment. If you need a healing in your body right now, just begin to ask the Lord. He's a good father. He gives good gifts to his children. We're not in charge of whether it happens or not. We're in charge. We're just, it's just our charge to obey and to pray and to ask. So Father, I ask you to heal in the room right now. God, would you come down and heal Lord, I believe you're healing an ear issue right now in someone's heart. Father, I pray for healing in ears in Jesus' name. God, there's a sinus issue, and I pray in Jesus' name, healing over sinus issues right now, God. We release our faith, and we pray for that in Jesus' name. God, you're doing it. God, you're doing it, Lord. I pray healing over mesothelioma in Jesus' name. Someone has an issue with your pancreas. And the Lord wants to heal you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask that you would heal that issue with, with their pancreas. God, so, someone has like a blood disorder, some kind of a blood disease. And Father, we pray healing over blood diseases right now, blood disorders right now in the name of Jesus. God, we just release our faith for that. We pray for that in Jesus' name. someone, you've been having thoughts of suicide. And the Holy Spirit would say to you, you are a beloved son. You are a beloved daughter. You are known by your heavenly father. And there's freedom available. And suicide is not the answer. There's hope in Jesus today. And I just want to encourage you, if that's you, if you've had thoughts of suicide, do not leave this property without grabbing someone with a lanyard on and saying, that was me, I need help. We're your family, we're with you, there's hope. You don't have to live in despair any longer. We're gonna come alongside you and help you. Don't leave the property without grabbing someone with a lanyard and saying, that was me, I've had those thoughts, I need help. We will get you the right help you need. Father, I thank you for healing and deliverance in this place. Father, I thank you that you're touching your sons and daughters, someone you've been cutting. And the Lord wants you to know you are seen and you are loved. You are a child of God. And the Lord wants you to know there's freedom. You don't have to live in pain any longer. There's hope in Jesus. There's hope in him. There's healing in him. Some of us, you feel clouded in your thoughts. You feel like I just can't get clear in my mind. Like, it's just like, a, I, still, I just sense like the, a cloudiness in your thoughts. And the Lord would say to you, turn off the noise. Turn off social media. Turn off the news. Turn off all of the interruptions and the alerts and double down on reading my word, double down on prayer, put praise and worship music on in the car, saturate yourself, your world, with good things, with the things of the word of God, and watch for three days. Watch what happens, watch what happens. The Lord would say, you're gonna see an instant change. The fogginess in your mind will lift and be gone because the things of the word were, uh, the things of the word of God will bring purity to your mind. That's a word for somebody today. 
Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that the same spirit that raised Jesus, that raised you from the dead, quickens our mortal body. Lord, you're here, you're moving, you're ministering to your sons and daughters. If you need healing in any area of your body right now, just let your hand on that area. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to release healing. Release healing over eyes. Release healing over organs today. Release healing over, over depression and anxiety, over mental thoughts that are, that are negative and aren't pleasing to you, God. We pray, and we pray, God, I pray breakthrough in a poverty mindset. Someone has a poverty mindset, and the Lord wants to break that off of your life. You're going to leave different. You came in bound. You're going to leave free. You came in uh, in despair. You're going to leave in hope. And so, God, I thank you that you are the God of all hope. And so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray hope over each and every one of us today. God, thank you that you are the risen Savior. You're not in the tomb. You are alive. And because of your life, we can have life. So I bless each of these, your sons and daughters, in Jesus' name. And everyone who agreed with that prayer said, amen. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. Come on, church family. Would you stand with me? Let's continue to keep this celebration going. Man, we saw hands literally go up all over this room. There are seven salvations in our kids' ministry. God is on the move, and we know that they are celebrated in heaven. So let's celebrate alongside every person that said yes to a relationship with Jesus. Let's clap for them. Let's celebrate. God is so, so good. And if that was you, uh, we're going to have the prayer team come on out, and we would love for you to make your way on down to the stage. If you said yes, we want to we wanna partner with you. We want to walk this journey out alongside of you. We want to put a Bible in your hand. And if you are here for the very first time, as you leave today under our white tent, we want to meet you. We have a gift for you saying thank you for being here with us. The prayer team is down here for any prayer um, that you may need throughout the, uh, for the remainder of this week. And wasn't our, that new song, Jesus is Near, wasn't it incredible? Incredible, and it will be on uh, all of the social platforms on April the 5th. Um, so you can worship to that song in your car. Uh, don't forget there's photo booths outside um, as well. So make sure that you slow down, take pictures with you and your family. And then as you leave the parking lot, uh, make sure that we all exit out of the north exit. So when you walk out, it's the exit to your left. Sound great? Thank you all. Have an incredible week.